plants have an astounding ability to utilize complex biosynthetic pathways to create a wide array of products, each serving its own special role in basic support of life, such as for energy or building blocks, and also for enhancing the likelihood of survival and reproduction, such as for resource competition or defense. Over time, humans and animals have learned to harness many of these plant compounds, referred to as secondary metabolites, to serve their own needs. The aim of this lesson is to introduce you to the major classes of medically relevant plant metabolites and discuss some of the basic mechanisms underlying their pharmacological action. We'll take a deep dive into one of the largest classes of plant compounds, the phenolics, and address other classes in future lessons. These are the major groups of natural products from plants that we'll cover in this and future lessons. Phenolics and polyphenols are represented by a very large group of natural products, including quinones, flavonoids, tannins, and coumarins, among others. These secondary metabolites play a key role in the chemical ecology of plants, including pigmentation of tissues, roles in defense, prevention of microbial infections, and more. Moreover, many of these compounds are relevant to human medicine due to a diverse assortment of biological activities. Terpenoids are highly volatile and tend to be associated with plant fragrances. Many of the plant compounds with psychoactive pharmacological activities belong to the alkaloid class. And then we have lectin, which are plant proteins, as well as polypeptides, or short chains of amino acids. Lastly, I'll provide an overview of plant phenylpropenes, lignans, and glycosides. For this lesson, though, we'll be focusing on phenolic compounds, and we'll get to the other groups next. Let's begin with the phenolic compounds, also referred to as phenols. These consist of compounds that have a hydroxyl group, or an OH bond, linked directly to an aromatic hydrocarbon group. The simplest member of this class is carbolic acid, or phenol, in which a single hydroxyl group is linked to a benzene ring. First extracted from coal tar in 1834, this simple compound was used by the British surgeon Sir Joseph Lister in his pioneering work on the use of antiseptics to decrease hospital infections. While it's no longer used in surgical procedures today, it is still used as the active ingredient in some oral analgesics like chloroseptic throat sprays. Phenolic acids are characterized by a carboxyl group substituted on a phenol. Though relatively simple in structure, these compounds have proven to be very useful in medicinal applications. Salicylic acid, for example, falls within this group. It is widely used in over-the-counter topical treatments for acne and also happens to be the precursor that led to the discovery of aspirin. Polyphenols, on the other hand, are composed of more than one phenolic unit, but lack a nitrogen. A common scheme used to classify these compounds is based on the number of carbon atoms present, the basic skeleton, and the number of phenolic cycles. Plants produce six common cinnamic acids. You have cinnamic acid, p-cumeric acid, caffeic acid, ferulic acid, and 5-hydroxyferulic acid, and synapic acid. These are considered to be ubiquitous across most plant species, with at least three being found in each species. Similarly to the cinnamic acids, coumarins also contain a C6-C3 skeleton, with the difference that they also have an oxygen heterocycle as part of the C3 portion of the structure. The compound coumarin received its name from its botanical source, the tonka bean, shown here the French common name of Kumaru, in which it was originally isolated from in 1820. The fragrance of coumarin is one that you may unknowingly be familiar with. It contributes to the smell of freshly cut grass. Coumarins play an important role in plant defense, and the production of phytoalexins, which have broad spectrum antimicrobial and antioxidant activities, is stimulated during plant infections. 
Examples of coumarins with such biological activity include esculetin, scopoletin, and umbiliferone. Interestingly, coumarins are not widely distributed across botanical families. Instead, they are most commonly found in the Apiaceae, or carrot family, the Rutaceae, or citrus family, the Asteraceae, or daisy family, and the Fabaceae, or bean family. The four hydroxycoumarins, such as warfarin and dicoumarol, exhibit strong biological activities as anticoagulants. Warfarin is also known by its brand name of coumadin, and it is used in medicine to prevent the formation of blood clots and their movement in the body. But, as with many drugs, the line between poison and medicine is often a thin one. Warfarin was originally used as a pesticide against rodents and is still used for this purpose. Dicoumarol is the result of the chemical transformation of coumarin, made in plants like sweet clover in the Fabaceae family, into a 4-hydroxycoumarin by a number of fungal species. It was originally discovered following examination of silage, which is moldy or fermented hay, that contains sweet clover, which was linked to hemorrhagic bleeding disorders in the cattle that fed on it. Sorolins are coumarins that have a furan ring. Sorolin is a phytochemical that has been in use for millennia. It is a major bioactive compound found in ancient Egyptian medicinal plants used in the treatment of skin disease. Still today, sorolin is used in combination with ultraviolet A light in PUVA, or sorolin plus UVA therapy, for the treatment of vitiligo. Angelicin, on the other hand, has demonstrated potent antiviral activities on the gamma herpes viruses, including Epstein-Barr virus and Kaposi sarcoma-associated herpes virus. As an inhibitor of some forms of the cytochrome P450 enzymes, especially cytochrome P3A, bergamotin and 6,7-dihydroxybergamotin have been implicated in interference with the metabolism of at least 85 pharmaceutical drugs. Present in grapefruits, these compounds are responsible for the grapefruit juice effect, and this is the reason why you may be advised by your doctor to avoid drinking grapefruit juice while taking certain medications. Flavonoids are synthesized in plants in response to infection, and many have shown activity against bacteria and viruses, including HIV and RSV. In plants, flavonoids commonly occur as plant pigments, often yellow or orange, and flavus means yellow. These are universal within the plant kingdom. It is likely that one of their main roles in nature is as color attractants to insects and birds, or to affect the taste of plants. Some flavonoids are exceptionally bitter and astringent, while others are intensely sweet. Flavonoids have important dietary significance because, being phenolic compounds, they are also strongly antioxidant. The next group we'll discuss are the flavones, flavanols, and flavonoids. These share some structural similarities with minor differences between each group. Flavanols can be oxidized to yield anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are responsible for the brilliant blues and dark reds and purples of fruits like bilberries or fruit products like red wine. Anthocyanins have superoxide radical scavenging effects, both in test tubes and in animal studies. Quinones are composed of aromatic rings with two ketone substitutions. This class is responsible for the browning effect when fruit and vegetables are cut. A good example of this is a cut apple. Quinones found in Lawsonia inermis, or the henna plant, are also what drive the beautiful coloration of this temporary tattoo. Quinones provide a source of stable free radicals and can inactivate proteins by irreversibly complexing with nucleophilic amino acids. Some quinones can also serve as antibacterial agents targeting surface-exposed adhesins, cell wall polypeptides, and membrane-bound enzymes. 
Some good examples of anthroquinones include imidin, anthrone, dianthrone, and anthrone. Anthroquinones are commonly found in nature in their glycoside form as anthroquinone glycosides, which will be discussed in a future lesson. Tannins are well known for their astringency and bitterness in the flavor of many foods. A key feature of tannins is their ability to bind to proteins, and for this reason they have been used to tan leather. Tannins are water-soluble and divided into two key groups, the hydrolyzable tannins and condensed or non-hydrolyzable tannins. Hydrolyzable tannins are derived from simple phenolic compounds, and they are linked to a sugar by esterification. They can be hydrolyzed by base to produce simple acids and sugars. On the other hand, non-hydrolyzable tannins, or condensed tannins, are formed by polymerization of flavonoids. These tannins are used mainly because of their stringent properties and have utility, for example, as antidiarrheal agents. However, consumption of tannins can lead to reduction in absorption of proteins and other nutrients. They can also precipitate other components in herbal preparations. And here you can see an example of a gall created by the dog rose as a defense mechanism against pests. These galls are rich in elagitanin content and are used in medicinal teas to treat diarrhea in Anatolia. You may encounter phenolic plant compounds every day as part of a diet rich in fruits and vegetables. Phenolics play an important role in human health because of their antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and in some cases, antimicrobial activities. Reflect on what you ate today. How many ingredients likely contributed to your total phenolic consumption with each meal?